Today's video is brought to you by ASUS. What's up everyone, my name is Lee and in today's video I'm going to address a couple of issues with my setup, specifically the limitations I have with the workbench and my pegboard area located by my main setup. So let's get into it. So what's cool about this pegboard is the fact that, I mean, it, it looks cool and there's a lot of ways I can use it. The negative is, first off, I wish it was a little bit bigger and second of all, it's located on the side of this desk. so. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off all of this stuff and then move it over here and move these uh, Geek Acoustic boards to somewhere else and essentially turn this into my little workstation. With that said, let's go ahead and get started with removing everything, including the pegboard, and then we'll go from there. Listen, I know this is where I could have Googled how to make a frame and given you a decent enough video, but my dad is a master craftsman and has been working with wood for over 50 years. And after slowly building myself an arsenal of Black Friday sale tools, I asked him if he could come over and show me how he'd do it using mine rather than his industrial workshop. So let's go through how he went about building the majority of this pegboard frame. To start off, I got four inch poplar as the main wood. I got two eight foot pieces that cost a total of about $38. It's not super cheap, but what's nice is that they're planed already and perfectly straight, which is much harder to find with the cheaper options. He started off by cutting them to length with 45 degree angle ends. This is where I found out my miter saw was not perfectly straight like I thought, so he used a precision square to straighten it up. To connect the pieces, he used a biscuit joiner. And yes, this is technically his tool. What this tool basically does is it makes joining the corners a little bit faster, makes them stronger, and it also gives us better alignment. Before adding glue and nails, we did a quick assembly to ensure that it fit correctly. Then we drew out where we wanted to have cutouts for the bottom and top of the board to act as sections for the cables to go through from the bottom and then for my new light to go through the top. To construct the frame together, he added wood glue to the biscuits and corners and then used an 18 gauge brad nailer. If you don't have a nailer, you can likely complete this with some finishing nails and a hammer instead. To give this board more structure and points to screw into, we added some framing using one inch thick, two inch wide pieces of wood and attached them using just the brad nails. This is where we probably could have used some pocket holes, but the nail gun worked just fine for what we needed. The last thing my dad helped me with was taking me through using a router. We went with a 45 degree bit to give the ends a nice clean look rather than the straight edge look we'd get otherwise. To give it more of a clean look, I added a little wood glue to the corners and sanded them in using 220 grit sandpaper to fill in the exposed corners. In order to hang this, I made a fairly simple French cleat hook and I did this by cutting it at a 45 degree angle with my table saw. You can always purchase metal French cleats and there's always other ways of cutting these if you don't have a table saw. After I installed it to the top of the board, I added a bracket to the middle of the frame to be where I'd clamp my overhead light to. To finalize this whole thing, I sanded it all down using 220 grit sandpaper with my orbital sander before staining and sealing it. 
For the stain, I went with weathered oak stain and I just followed the instructions on the can. And to seal it, I applied a few layers of my favorite Armor Seal oil-based satin top coat. Finally, I screwed the wall control pegboards into place, and then I was actually able to reuse the Govi RGB lights I originally had on these. Now let's go ahead and get back to my office. One skill I highly recommend getting decent at is learning how to patch walls. There are solid videos on YouTube, but a couple of my pro tips that work for me when I'm working with drywalls are after you place the spackling into the hole, use the handle of your scraper to push the spackling and the hole inward. Don't be afraid to add spackle again to the hole after it dries if you're not satisfied with how it looks after sanding. And the final big tip for me is to use a roller that is gonna give you the same texture of paint as the rest of the wall. I've never really had much luck painting larger spots using a paintbrush and it not sticking out. Then again, I'm just a dude that learns from the internet, so definitely feel free to leave your tips and tricks down in the comments to help myself and others in the future. To hang this by myself, I took advantage of having an adjustable workbench to figure out how high I wanted it. Keep in mind with the woods, pegboards, and items getting placed on here, it's gonna be fairly heavy. So when installing the French cleats, I look specifically for studs to screw these into to give it as much support as possible. There are a bunch of videos on YouTube that inspired me to do this, but I wanted to shout out Syrup Labs specifically for the studio build guide video on how they did their charging station pegboard with the wooden frame and rubber grommets. If you like this video, I highly recommend checking out their video because I love their execution on a lot of what they did. After getting it up on the wall, I took my time experimenting with where I wanted to put everything as I get kind of OCD about things like this, and I'm going to want to figure out what I want where for easy access. I also wanted to figure out where I wanted to run cables to make parts of this into charging stations. I'll leave links to all the items shown down in the description. Some of them I've covered in a past video, but a lot of the new ones are from the same brand that makes the pegboards. I wanted to minimize the amount of cables I'd have to look at every day, so to keep everything clean, I drilled a few holes to run cables in the back using a large step drill bit. This pegboard is made from 20 gauge steel, so drilling this hole specifically took me like 10 plus minutes. I also didn't want to mess up, so honestly, this may have taken me longer, but if you have any tips for drilling holes like this, leave me a comment down below. Once the hole was drilled, I filed down the rough edges and I added rubber grommets to give it a cleaner look and protect the cables. To mount the power strip and battery chargers, I use heavy duty Velcro. This just makes it easy to apply and remove if needed, and it has plenty of strength to hold everything. After I figured out where I wanted everything, I took the board down and began working on the back. I ended up needing another bracket to place a surge protector dedicated to everything else such as the Gobi strip and overhead light. I used a 65 watt USB charger block from Ugreen to act as the quick charging powerhouse for all the USB cable items. I could have done a little bit better with my cable management, but I think I did decent enough here. I didn't want to drill any large holes to run wires behind the walls, so I went with a cord hider that installs on the wall using adhesive. It also gives me the ability to remove the top in case I need to take the board back down. Once I have a day where I'm not being lazy, I might paint it the same color as the wall to better blend in. But for now, I'm just going to keep it as is. Outside of the pegboard itself, I wanted to make this a fully functional workstation. So ASUS sent me their ZenScreen 22 inch portable monitor. I've used a lot of monitors over the last few years for gaming and productivity, but this is my first portable monitor. So I got kind of excited to get this because it made me think outside of the box of how I was gonna use it. But before we get into that, let me quickly take you through some of the things that come inside of this box. See what I did there? 
Outside of the basics that you get inside this box, they also included a couple of partition mount hooks that can be used to hang the monitor at your cubicle at work, or you can use the matte black C-clamp desk mount that they also included that is actually a really well-made mount. But also, it is a portable monitor, so you can simply use the fold-out kickstand. When it comes to specs, this is a 22-inch 1080p 100Hz IPS monitor. This can be powered either using the power supply that it came with, or you can plug it into your laptop using the USB-C cable, which powers the monitor without having to plug it into an outlet. At 22 inches, this is a larger portable monitor, so I wouldn't classify it as a travel monitor that you'd put in your backpack. It's more of something you'd move around the house or your office to work as a solid secondary monitor or other tasks that you'd want to display for. For my workstation, this is gonna act as a secondary monitor as well as a primary monitor when my MacBook is in clamshell mode. I'll go more into the monitor later, but for now, let's go ahead and get the rest of the workshop set up. Now, I primarily use my MacBook with most of my work, but I wanted to maximize space on my workbench. So one of the last things I wanted to add was this PegZone desk side organizer. I got this one off Amazon as something I could clamp to my desk to hold my laptop and the Asus monitor's power supply. This frees up a bunch of room, but it's also easy to remove whenever I need to. My only complaint is that I wish it came with more rubber spacers to prevent my MacBook from rubbing up against the metal surface. With everything set up now, let's see how my new workstation turned out. But make it cinematic. had this set up for a few weeks now but here are a few things that I've loved about it and how I've used it so far. First off the overhead light has been the ideal addition to this room as I only had one source of light which is the ceiling fan so sitting at this setup used to be really bad lighting at night. This is now my 3D printing station. I still have my Ender 3D printer and I'm currently using it to see if I want to implement a magnetic gridfinity organization system for my husky desk drawers. The monitor has been awesome having here. I use it as my how do I do this video watching station for things like maintenance to our robot vacuum. I also use it as a great place to add my notes to my Notion setup. And as a YouTuber, I use it to rewatch footage on a bigger display to ensure that I got the best shot. Plus, I also started using it as the bigger display for unboxing videos as I've struggled in the past with missing flaws in my shots and being out of focus. This is also now my main charging station for basically everything. I can't stress enough how nice it is to have a station like this to easily plug in without searching every corner of the house for the correct cable. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did get anything useful out of it, be sure to like and subscribe. If there's anything you'd do different, feel free to leave me a comment down below. With that said, I'll see you all next time.